Today we will discuss a case study that involves a cement carrier uh, destroying its uh, cargo in heavy weather. Uh, this is uh, an important case study because uh, personally from speaking from personal experience cement carriers are one of the most uh, complicated ships to sail on um, in terms of carriage of cargo because uh, when you are loading cement uh, it's a sensitive cargo cargo that is prone to damage due to any kind of contact with water and that's why i thought today i'll discuss this case study because it also helps you to prepare uh, for answering any questions in your written or oral examination in terms of the carriage of cement as a cargo on ships uh, there are some important lessons to be learned uh, from this case study and I hope that uh, you find it useful towards your exam preparation or a general knowledge towards a carriage of cargo in bulk on cement carriers. So this uh, case study is about a handy sized uh, bulk carrier uh, that was loading a full cargo of cement uh, in the one of the Chinese ports during northern winter. And uh, it was using an enclosed loading system. And what is an enclosed loading system is something that you can see on the screen. Uh, an enclosed loading system means that uh, hatch covers are kept closed as you see on your screens and a loading chute uh, is fed through a manhole uh, in the closed hatch top with the cargo being pumped under pressure into the hole. So it does not, uh, a closed uh, system does not use uh, what you see normally on bulk carriers. It does not use uh, the hatch covers, it does not keep the hatch covers open it does not use a open chute system where cargo is or a grab system where cargo is just being filled into the cargo hold using a grab system here it's a loading chute system it's an enclosed system and the reason uh, is that uh, many times if a port is uh, prone to uh, say rainfall or uh, like mainly rain uh, then uh, there is a, uh, there are cargoes may be prone to getting coming in contact with the water and getting damaged and that is why uh, many a times a loading or a closed chute system is used so that the hatch covers do not have to be opened and the cargo is loaded only through the chute. So even if it starts to rain, then the cargo will not get damaged due to contact with water from it. All right. So on, on route to the load, once the loading was done and uh, on once the ship departed, uh, after the holes had been cleaned, the hatches were water tested they were tested for water tightness using the ship's fire hoses so to make sure that the, there is no water leakage going into the hatch covers into the cargo holes uh, and uh, cargo will be safe during the voyage so they use the uh, fire water hoses they uses the fire hoses from the ships to test for the water tightness of the hatch covers you can see how the hoses are used for testing of water tightness uh, on your screens and uh, the hatch covers were found to have no leaks after the testing was done the hatch covers were found to have no leaks the master noted that the length of the loading chute only just fitted into the hold by 60 centimeters and uh, this meant that the cement cargo was being fed in from the top of the hold producing a considerable amount of cement dust into the top frames hatch trackways and hatch combing drain holes now the hatch cover drain holes were not taped over before the start of loading. It should be the practice if of course the weather permits to clean the trackways and hatch cover combings after loading using compressed air if the port regulations allow. Now this clears the drain holes and water channels of dirt and cement dust. Now during the Pacific voyage the ship was weather routed and heavy weather was encountered and sea water entered the hatch trackways. Now you can see here this ship is going through and, and it has encountered heavy weather and seas on its forecastle deck and its foredeck. The Beaufort wind force was more than nine. So it was strong winds with shipping sea sprays and all that. So the water mixed with the cement and all the drainage channels to the forward two hatch combings were blocked with hardened cement. This is what it looked like. So you can see here uh, the hardened cement in the hatch combing trackways. So it was the hatch combing trackways that developed this hardened cement. All right. So although they tested the hatch covers for the water tightness and they found the hatch covers, the hatch, uh, the hatch covers were having no leaks, 
but because the trackways, the top frames and the combing drain holes, they were not cleaned of the cargo, the she sea sprays or the seas that was shipped onto the ship and the cargo that was in these trackways came in contact, they became hardened. So as a result, what happens is that the water mixed with the cement and all the drainage channels to the forward two hatch combings were blocked with hardened cement. Now, as a result, water started to enter the holes and damage the cargo because the drainage channels were blocked. It was not working. So the sealing tape was ineffective in such heavy seas. The sealing tape anyway cannot be considered as a primary barrier to water ingress. So you know what sealing tape is? The sealing tape is all around the hatch cover. So that cannot be considered to be a major barrier, especially when there are such heavy sea sprays around. Now, because of this, the cargo was damaged. And the claim that was submitted by the, sh by the shippers uh, and it included of course the cargo damage and the disposal of the cargo and all the associated cost was more than 650,000 US dollars. So that was a heavy claim on the ship owners and of course uh, the ship owners will not be happy in this case and uh, blame will come also on the ship's master as well as the ship's crew who do not take the adequate precautions to carry the cargo during the voyage. So what were some of the lessons learned was that uh, masters and chief officers, especially who are in responsible for carriage of cargo, they should confirm that the weather routing advice takes into account of the water sensitive nature of the cement cargo. Masters on their behalf should let it be known when they have any kind of reservations or doubts, uh, especially in terms of uh, stevedores and charters uh, using incorrect loading equipment, or not getting the hatch trackways and hatch combings cleaned. If you want them to be cleaned by the stewards, then make sure you let the stewards know, you let the shore staff know that they should make sure they clean the trackways and the combings before the uh, ship departs from the port. Before loading cement uh, or any other similar dusty cargoes that may become hardened by the contact of water, the combing drain holes should be taped over to prevent the entry of dust. So tapes should be then removed before blowing down. After a closed loading operation, the trackways should be cleaned if possible and cleaned to free the drain holes, especially if the weather allows. And masters should advise their owners and charters of this requirement. So you could see that from this case study, we kind of learned how important it is to not only keep the hatch covers watertight and make sure they don't enter, the water doesn't enter the cargo, but also to make sure that we keep the hatch trackways and the hatch cover combings, that's just the frames below the hatch cover combings and the uh, drain drainage holes to be cleaned, to make sure that they are also cleaned. The top frames, the hatch trackways, the hatch combing draining holes, they all should be taken care of to ensure that the had the water tightness of the hatch covers and the holes cargo holes is maintained because especially when you're carrying such cargo and then again this is an example of a cement cargo sometimes you may be carrying other cargoes such as sulfur or coal and they are also prone to different kind of damages you know especially coal if you have wet cargo in coal then you have problems with the water floating on top and then that starts to roll the cargo and the water starts to roll around so the free surface effect is created cargo may shift and that could create an angle of load or a heavy list. If sulfur is there, that may create a, uh, a mixture that often leads to corrosion of ship structures, which is not good for the structural strength of the ship structure. So different bulk cargoes, they have of course different properties and you should read up on it. And this is an example I have taken only to show you uh, why uh, you should be studying about the properties of the cargo and ensuring that all precautions are observed because if the cargo gets damaged and some cargoes are prone to very easy damage uh, you know containers and all that is fine but with bulk cargoes that what happens is that if the cargo gets damaged and the shippers will make huge claims they will make claims worth of sometimes millions of dollars and the owners will not be happy and you might end up losing your job as the mariner who was responsible of carrying such cargo. So of course there are other cargoes as well, you know, coal, bauxite, manganese ore, salt, soda ash, they all have their own properties, you know, so, so and soda ash also uh, sometimes is loaded through the hold access in the deck 
especially if there is any kind of adverse weather conditions around so that soda ash is also a kind of cargo that must remain dry at all times so again i have taken an example of uh, cement but i request you that if you are involved in loading bulk carriers or bulk cargoes on ships and you are a chief officer on that ship or a master then make sure you have read up on the properties of the cargo uh, do not rely on the shipper's report of course read up the shipper's report read up about the properties of the cargo that the shipper provides but also do your own research and make sure that you follow all the etiquette precautions to prevent such damage happening on your ships i'll stop this video now and let me know what you thought about this video and whether it was useful or not bye for now